on and she is awesome and I just found out she had an oopsie over the holidays she can tell us about um, but she's she's doing well as far as I know and um, I see okay good so what happens is I have this program and like I see zero 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 and then it pops up and all of you are here so I'm also have my other computer over here so if I'm looking away I'm just checking there because you may have made some um, comments before then because it's weird. Oh, there we go. First comment up because it every once in a while the comments don't show up and I'm now I'm paranoid every time. So it's January in 2024 and I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's been a very busy month for me and I, it sounds like it has been for you too. But in case there's someone here who doesn't know you yet, Dr. Stephanie Peacock, would you like to ex talk a little bit about yourself and what your specialties are? And that way you guys can ask questions. But today, we're, I thought it would be good if we at least started with the base of what's some easy things we can do. It's still January. You know, we're still looking to add in some of those good habits. It, and let me be clear. You can do it in February or even July. So there's not a deadline, but I feel like people are more um, looking for little things to add a little bit more. So I'm going to put it over to you, Dr. Staff, to introduce yourself. Great. All right. Thank you, Kathy. And I am so excited to be on the show today because one, it's just fun to connect with you and the audience and be able to talk about all the great stuff, but I really did miss seeing your face because we, I think our last live here was in November and then December, we were just like, you know what? Crazy time. Like we don't have, like, we're just busy. And like, even though it'd be fun to connect, we were like, we had a lot going on. So we were like, let's just postpone to January. So here we are almost the end of January, but we made it. So I'm really happy to be back. Thanks for always for having me and for everyone coming on. Um, so I'm Dr. Steph. I am a holistic uh, practitioner here in, I'm based in Orange County, California, but I act as a, as a consultant uh, to clients virtually all over the U.S. as well as um, internationally. And I primarily focus on s sort of those like mystery symptoms that arise from things that we get exposed to within our environment that can trigger kind of a cascade of inflammatory responses in our body. So um, my primary specialties are going to be chronic digestive issues. I specifically focus with small intestinal bacteria overgrowth and fungal overgrowth, um, so SIBO and CIFO. And then again, what's in our environment. So I focus, have, I'm an environmental um, toxin expert. So I focus in on what's in the environment that could also be causing issues that are hormone disrupting, gut disrupting, and other things as well. So I, especially mold, I definitely hone in on mold toxicity. Um, and my last one is mast cell activation syndrome as well. And I know we did a talk on that as well. So um, mass activation, basically just having this situation where we are, we become histamine intolerant and have a lot of histamine issues that and symptoms that can arise as well from our body, just being exposed to inflammation over and over and over again. So um, that's what I specialize in. I, when I know when I started coming on Kathy's show is we were really kind of diving into a lot of how do we detox our home? And we, I know we've gone through a lot of different stuff and I'm sure there's other things we can do as well. Um, that's always a fun thing to do, but, um, but yeah, that's basically what I specialize in. And I, uh, one last thing too, I know we did a chat on this before as well, but I also worked at true North health center for a year. I did my residency there working on water fasting, um, patients there, juice fasting, learned a lot about detoxification, um, which is what I implement in my practice today. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. So thanks again for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be on here to chat with you. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Like, I feel like if you live nearby, we would have to hang out. We would be sure. best friends. Oh, we already are, but we would, we would be meeting up probably weekly for a good vegan meal. <laughs> there would be food trading going on. You would, you would be both the benefactor and the abused of my weird mad scientist experiments <laughs> i would definitely volunteer to be your recipe tester like a hundred percent i would be there <laughs> oh i love that because i'm working on some um like mardi gras new orleans cajun kind of food right now that sounds amazing 
That sounds incredible. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Well, I'm going to do some andouille spiced air fried cauliflower to go on some red beans. And there is a red bean right and uh, red beans recipe. It's red beans and rice is kind of the name, but you got to steam your own rice. I'm not telling you how to do that. In the <laughs> recipe over on healthyslowcooking.com and it's it literally starts with two cans of red beans and some frozen vegetables. It takes 15 minutes start to finish. Okay. That's my, see, that's, and that's how I work as well. Just in general, like I don't do complicated recipes. Like they're fun and fun to do occasionally, but I like a recipe that takes tops like 20, 25 minutes to make. Cause I, you know, who has the time to just sit and make like an hour worth of like meal. I mean, I know you're taking the time to recipe develop that, but you know, in general, like oh, it's too much work to try to just, you know, sit there and like make a million different little ingredients to go into a dish. In my opinion, that's just too much. No, 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 no. And I agree. And I think there's times, I think it's like other things, like when we were talking about like getting toxins out of your house, I think it's very similar to, you want to have some things you can do right now and some yeah. things you might do later. And like some things like we talked about, you know, like cleaning your walls, that is not going to be a weekly task for me. Thank yeah. you. That might be a, I'm still not sure that's a yearly task for me, but it might be, right? Yeah, and so totally. I think cooking is the same way. Like sometimes you need, my brain needs to come in and have some play time. And I was noticing that this morning because I'm coming up with some crazy ideas. And whenever that happens, it means I need to get in there and get some stuff going. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And I think we, and that's something I definitely wanted to go over today was I think we try to fill our time with so much um like just regimented like tasks because it's just like how our society is built like we just got to keep working and like grinding it out but when you give yourself like that couple hours or even an hour of like like you said playtime or creativity like it's amazing what your brain can come up with and i recently actually part of what i was i was busy over the holidays but i actually took a couple weeks off of consulting just because I needed time to like rebrand, reset like my newsletter, just get my website up to date on what I really do with people. And just, there was a lot of stuff that I needed to do and create and um, like handouts that I do for my clients. And it really gave me the opportunity to be more creative, to understand like more of what I want to display on my site. Like, who am I? Like, how do I help people? And it really was like what I needed because on a daily basis, I don't have the time to do that. And I was so grateful. I was, I was just like, you know what? I need to give myself this time because I'm not going to give this much to, to me any other time, right? Like during the week. So it was just, uh, I just personally experienced that over the, over the holidays. I was I actually trying to slow down more and just be like, what, what do I need to do right now that will help me later in the future? But yeah. <laughs> we should have been talking in December because in December I was working like a crazy person. Like I worked all <laughs> through the now. holidays, absolutely all through the holidays. We went live on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, made stuff. Oh, oh and I, yeah, no, I worked all the time, but we did just get back from a vacation. We took some time. We. We try to go see Cheryl's parents in or, uh, Ocala, which is near Orlando, like twice a year when we can. And so even though we didn't go into the parks, we went to the resorts. And I love the resorts there. I don't know if you, have you been to Disney? Okay. Oh, yes, yes. So I grew up three hours south of Orlando. So um, every okay. year went went there and I, yes, very familiar with the whole layout there. And I love it. Yes, so fun. So like we went and we, cause we love the Polynesian and we, we definitely love like little tiki drinks and we got a, we got so many tiki mugs. We got so oh. many, but so like we went and I took everybody into Trader Sam's and showed them around. Like we did a couple of lives while we were there. But for me, like going out in there, it's like sometimes my brain when I work, especially computer work, cause I do different kinds of work. It, it gets stuck. And it yeah. can't let go. It's hard to, I'm still sleeping. There have been times it's even hard to sleep, but I can't just like go and sit down and relax because my brain is like, no, you need yeah, to go back yeah. and do that. So I love that you're talking about that. And I think that play can mean a lot of different things too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. I think 
depending like where you're at in your life, like what you need that will like, what, so what is it like maybe you're working on like with yourself? Like for some people, it literally just means like cutting everything out, not even like working on a project, right? Just like, just, you know, just going into nature, go to the beach, go hang out with like a family member, go get coffee with a good friend that you haven't seen in a while. Like, and that I consider those things as play too for myself. I think it's just even depending on like where you're at, like with what you're like wanting to work on. Like for me, I actually love working on little projects. Like it is play for me and like creating little handouts and like rebrand and doing all this stuff on my website. Like that's actually fun for me. And so, you know, giving myself the time to do that, I was like, this is great. And it took a load of stress off because once I started seeing clients again a couple weeks ago, I was like, oh my God, everything's all set up. It's this is making my life so much easier. And then I just feel less stress from that. But I did make sure to input like, you know, catching up with a friend, like during things like that and going out to like fun dinners during the week and, you know, implementing things like that as well. But yeah, definitely that definition of play is going to be different for everybody. But I love that. And I love the way you're including a lot of different kind of non-work, non-stress, non-typical tasks. And I, you know, like going out with, to have coffee, you know, like those are things that can be hard to schedule sometimes yes yeah. and you would think they wouldn't be because you want to go and they want to go but then as soon as you start going oh i we have to work out these things with schedules and stuff it can be so much harder and it, let me go back ryan was saying i'm the same same way finally getting a day or two off and want to play around with some sauce recipes you know and, and pl- awesome. yeah playing That's in the cool. kitchen For me, when I get super stressed out um, and too full, when my brain starts to get stuck, one of the things that's super helpful for me is to go take a walk, to be outside. So, you know, I love that you brought that up too. And uh, well, first I'll comment on that coffee comment, like agreed, like it's, you think that just like talking about like, oh, let's just go get a cup of coffee sometime. Like it's easy to say it, but when you try to implement it, everyone's schedule is different. Sometimes you're just so busy and, and, you know, it can almost be stressful to try to schedule that because you're like, well, I got to do this and this and this and it takes time. And so, yeah, that can, you know, it, I think depending where you're at, that could be like a stressful thing or that could be like something that's like, OK, this is finally my playtime. Yay. And for me, over the last couple of weeks, it was my playtime. I was like, Yay, I have the time. Let's do it. Um, and so and I think it's it's definitely just like trying to you know, don't ever be hard on yourself and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is stressing me out. Like that is okay. If like, you feel like you just don't have the bandwidth for that. Like, I will be honest with my, and your friends, if they are your true friends, they will understand if you feel like you're in a place where meeting up is just too hard in the moment and you just need to wind down and be alone because I'm an introvert. Like, uh, and most people are like, you're an introvert. And I'm like, yes, I am actually, I'm an extroverted introvert. When I'm with people I love, I can just talk and talk and talk, but you know, I need to recharge by myself. And sometimes that's just, to me, that looks like not getting a cup of coffee. That's like, I just want to sit inside all day and watch like a movie or like read me a good too. book. Me too. I'm yeah, totally, or- totally like that. And in yeah. fact, yesterday, because even though we took a little vacation, like literally I came back and like <laughs> hit it, like worked all the way home on the drive, nine hour drive home. And I did stuff every day. And so yesterday I was like, okay, I'm taking part of today off. And I just went back downstairs, curled under the covers like I was five or six, you know, we don't need a flashlight because I had my iPad and I just read and I watched a movie and I just like, I love, I love Cheryl. I love the dog. I love the cat, but I wanted nothing in my head and it was even just doing that I did it for kind of a long time I think I did it for four or five hours that's great and it was like having a whole day off somewhere by myself and I feel like today I woke up so refreshed that's amazing I love hearing that too and I think we need to like make this the norm like it's okay to do that like you said like go under the covers with a good book or a movie and just like, like you're five years old and just like relax. Like we're all meant to access like that inner child. Like we we all have that within us and that's like where our safe space is. And I'm the exact same way. Like with my husband, like I love him to pieces and he's, he's actually just like me too, but sometimes we're just like, you know, 
like, sweetie, like we, we, I just need like my time, like just like a few hours. And like, I'm just going to go like in the room and close the door and it's going to be dark in there and quiet. And I don't want to talk to a single person <laughs> and just, you know, do what makes me feel happy. And I agree with you hundred percent. And even with like vacations, even though vacations are fun, they're very stimulating for us people, especially that are introverts. Right. And so there's a lot of people you're talking to or meeting or activities you're doing. And although it's really fun, it's like, you know, I, you know, you need almost to have a vacation from that vacation. <laughs> like just go and like relax and like not talk to a soul for like a few hours, you know? <laughs> it's so true. And like on the drive back, it was interesting because I'm also, and I don't know if we've talked about this and I'm not officially diagnosed, but I am pretty daggone sure I'm ADHD. Mm. I have a lot of I have pretty much all the girl symptoms, you know, where I would not have been noticed, but also things like if I get too stressed out or I do too many things, I'll get emotionally dysregulated. And, mm -hmm. and what that means to me and, and doc staff, if you have a better definition, please. But like for me, that's like when you're like, I am so upset and I can't really pull it together or that one noise just made me way more angry and yeah. are, are like, ah, you know, yeah. than it would normally. And so that's what that means to me. So it means I get, for me, I get really noise sensitive. So I've gotten some loop earbuds that are for talking. So if we're in a restaurant or we go to Costco, which really takes a lot of energy out of me, because I got to go up all the aisles, I get the steps and I get to see stuff. So, I mean, that also yeah. works well with my ADHD. <laughs> But there's too, too many noises and it can be stressful. And so putting those in, but on, and we'd had such a good trip on the way back, I had picked out a really good audible book that had everybody do the characters. And so we listened and Cheryl drives the whole way and I wanted to have something nice for her. I could hear it through my, my, even my AirPods on not transparent. And I was like, yee, yee. <laughs> by the time we got home from nine hours of like, but in a normal situation, I would have said, let's turn it off. But I knew she was tired and I really wanted her to have this lovely drive back for her. Right. Mm -hmm. But yes. I think what I'm finding when I'm feeling some of those things, because I, I don't know if I've associated that as being introverted and needing to feed myself, but sometimes as I'm paying attention to these, it's not to blame something for whatever's going on, but if I see that, oh, maybe I wasn't depressed yesterday, maybe I was emotionally dysregulated, and let me look at this and see how it looks different. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, for this year, I'm looking for tools to deal with it. And sometimes if I'm emotionally dysregulated, all I have to do is go downstairs and get under the covers and read a book. And that helps you. Yeah, and I'm not saying that'll help everyone, but I'm just, I think sometimes with, with me looking at it this a different way, it does seem like there are some smaller, shorter, more immediate routes to get some relief. That's, that's also not me saying, well, 2024, I'm not going to ever say I'm depressed or anxious. You know, we have all these feelings. But if it's anxious because I can't take any more sounds or is it anxious because I need to do my taxes? Right, right. No, definitely. And I think you brought up a really good point too in that it's like every one of us is a little bit different and it's it's almost like finding what tools work for you that you can have like in your toolbox that work in your in that moment in time like that you can take and use to calm down your nervous system, to calm down like whatever anxiety feelings are coming up for you or anything, right? To allow you to just calm down a little bit and to get you back to like your normal homeostasis because everyone's different and everyone has different triggers and different things that they're dealing with on a daily basis and, um, and things that can like trigger them and their nervous system to kind of get into that like heightened state to feel like, oh my God, I, I don't feel great. Like, like you said, emotionally dysregulated. And, you know, I go through the same thing too. And it's like, okay, well, what do, what do I know that calms me down that makes me really happy? And I'm similar. I love to just go like hold away and not talk to somebody for a whole day, even if it's someone that I love dearly, <laughs> you know, and it's other days it's like, oh, I could just use a nice bath. Like that sounds great. I just need like 30 minutes to myself, you know? And it's like, it's like, and it's every day will be different. You know, like some days you need more recharge time and other times, like maybe you just need like a half an hour and then you're good to go. And like you mentioned that with the walking too, 
earlier, what I wanted to comment on was um, actually, so like something that Kathy had mentioned that my little oopsie accident, I had actually broke my wrist five weeks ago, snowboarding of all things. I was doing a lesson and it was at the very bottom of the bunny hill and I was barely going probably a mile an hour and I just completely fell back and landed on my outstretched hand and God, it hurt. I've never broke anything before in my life. But, you know, the first thing that popped in my head was, oh, I can't do like my swimming or my yoga or all these things I love. And I got, I got very anxious and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I don't know how long I have to be in this cast for. And I start, I just, I calmed down and I was like, okay, what can I do that will, that I can, that can allow me to let these emotions go, like to let, let these feelings go because I'm feeling very anxious. I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go on a walk. And I discovered something that I never realized that I loved, but I love walking. <laughs> I was like, wait, I think I'm like, I think this might be my new favorite form of exercise. I get up right when I'm up in the morning, I go for a nice walk. I get exposed to the morning light. And then at nighttime, I go for my nighttime walk and get exposed to that red light at nighttime. And I'm that I, I, I feel like I'm the happiest I've ever been just implementing this, getting outside more and walking is a beautiful form of exercise and calming down your nervous system. And it's just really wonderful. And, you know, and it, I have to say, like, I'm not perfect at all. I had this moment happen to me where I broke my wrist and I was like, I got very anxious. I really did. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm not gonna be able to do the things that I love and everything that, you know, I, I enjoy on a daily basis, but I had to adapt and I was like what can I do that make bring that could bring me like genuine happiness and I was like let's just try walking and so it's again it's like that's another tool that I now have that I realize like when I'm anxious I'm actually going for a walk and it's wonderful so if you feel like you don't this is just a message to everyone listening like if you feel you don't have something that you know you can reach for it, it sometimes it's just about trying something new whether it's like a little magnesium soak foot bath or um maybe recipe developing in the kitchen like t- testing out some sauces or just going into the you know into a nice like room where you're away from everybody and watching a little movie like if it's going to look different to everybody it doesn't have to be any of those things but i think learning to expand some of those tools that you have is really helpful and i definitely learned that <laughs> with the hard way with the, with not be able to do a whole lot with this wrist so um anywho it's just, we're very adaptable that's the point i'm trying to make <laughs> Well, I love it. And Betsy was saying, it's amazing how an injury can help guide you in a new direction. Yes. And then we got some other great comments too. Um, Ryan said, I feel the same way, Kathy. It's nice to hear I'm not the only one that does that. And um, Trish said the Danish, and I'm going to say this wrong because is it hoogie? Hug? Hoogie? It's something like that. I'm H-Y-G-G-E. Hug? Is that that like the the, Danish? Yeah, I'll put it up here so you guys can see it because like, you know, I can't say words um, that are English. But and I know this because it's that cozy comfort winter that I keep expecting to happen. Like and when we came home, it was really cold. I have the house open. It's 70 degrees today. It was 20 degrees two days ago. So I feel like for me too, like I like to have this nice routine of getting into that. And Jill says she calls it a jammy day. And I'm like, every day can be jammy day if you're me. Um, I love it. I agree. But I think that people sometimes discount walking the same way. And, And there are other people, so like uh, Katya Gorbachova, who's been on the show before too, she is a vegan um, power lifter. So mm-hmm. her idea of walking is, and for what she's trying to do, is very different than my idea of walking. Like, so if we're not exercising like Katya is, walking is a really decent source of exercise and movement. Um, it, for, for Katya, it doesn't burn enough calories necessarily to be looked at a certain way. For her, it's just a different, you know, and you being yeah. a, a past Olympian, I'm sure you can see it from that standpoint too. But mm-hmm. I think for me and, and other people too, there are kinds of, like you think of yoga and you think, oh, well, that's going to make me feel more centered and at peace. And, you know, it's supposed to. And walking maybe in your mind is supposed to be something else. But whenever I'm really depressed or anxious, I've tried to train myself that the first thing I do is to go outside. And, and I think, um, was it, I think it was Saturday. 
with the wind chill here, it was like 19 degrees. It was stupid. It's, that's why it's so crazy. And so I put on all my winter gear. I had just gotten some really big winter mittens. And I'm like, because I was feeling so dysregulated. I had my winter coat. I had a hat. I had, oh my God. I looked like I was, like, I was a little outside. kid wrapped up in stuff. And I walked my little three miles and parts of me were a little chilly and parts of me were not and it all worked out. But I felt so much better from smelling the air, from listening to the birds, from just being out there. And I think that counts. I can think even when I lived in New York City a bazillion years ago, I walked every day there. And if work had been stressful, I would walk miles, like I would walk half a Manhattan and then take the train yeah. home, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think you, now I do live in a suburb. It is greener. There are evergreens and those things I treasure. But I think no matter where you are, you still can get a little something out of it. Definitely. I love that. And it's such a good point. And one other thing I'll bring on top of that is, yes, I think everyone's version of whatever exercise there is out there it can be what you want it to be so like you were saying with that power lifter right like she's probably maybe she's power walking or you know or just like it's her way to get like just some like gentle movement whatever her version of it is and for some other people it could it doesn't necessarily need to be something they're getting four or five miles and to get a lot of calories burned it's like i just need to go out for like a mile like 10 15 minutes and just hear nature, hear the, wherever, wherever you are that allows you to access where, you know, a suburb or the city, whatever it is, but you get outside regardless, right? Fresh air. Um, and same thing with like, even like lifting, right? Like I love to do weights a couple of times a week, but I do it for health. I'm not actually trying to do it to like, um, you know, just be a power lifter. Like it actually, I like lifting because it gives me like, I actually, it slows me down too. It's like, not like I'm not trying to go out there and do it. cardio. But some people running, it can be really like, you know, a really great form of just meditation because they're getting outside too. So it's interesting, but, you know, it can be whatever you want it to be, whatever sport, whatever activity you like to do, you know, it can mean something different to you than it does to me or you. And I think that's what's really cool about it as well, that like you can make whatever form of movement you want to be like your form in your own way. <laughs> I think that's awesome um, and a great way to look at it. And what are some other things? I, and one thing we talked about right before this, so I got a question on another video. Oh, Ryan wants to know what you did in the Olympics. Do you want to talk about that for a minute? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, well, so I wasn't directly in the Olympics, but I technically was an, considered an Olympian. So I was, um, I, so I was the Olympic alternate in the 800 meter freestyle. So, um, meaning that I would have like, so, so the way it works is it was the 800 meter freestyle, um, swimming. And, uh, so at our Olympic trials, the U S Olympic trials, just so you know, the United States is like the most competitive, best has the best athletes for swimming. Like it is near impossible to make any international team like on so because the way it works is so there's a million different events in swimming but at the trials which happens once every four years it's a few uh, months before the actual olympics um you swim your race and if you're top two you automatically make it on the u.s team so i was third and so but my time would have placed at the olympics so it's it's crazy because we're just so competitive and if i was on any other country i would have been there and place and blah, 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 which is great. But, you know, we're just so competitive that was, it's so impossible to make the team. But, um, but basically I was like considered, you know, on the team, but not actually competing. So, so it's, sorry, long winded answer to 800 meter freestyle. <laughs> with my I think that's awesome. Um, so what someone had asked on another video, and just so you guys know, I just do the McDougal program and I make recipes and I bring smart people on who can answer the questions that I don't know. <laughs> and someone said, how much water should you drink a day? And then it, what, it made me in my own little head go through this long tunnel of things because I kind of have an idea of how much I should drink, but I'm feeling some of that too, if that makes sense. And I was like, I'm assuming that I drink more in the summer than the winter probably because it's, I live in the South, it's hot. So I'd love to know a little bit of like, how would you help your client determine what's the right amount of water to drink for them? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a very, very um, general rule of thumb and actually like works for everyone is just you should always drink half your body weight in ounces of water. So for example, like somebody who's like um, 150 pounds, like they would need to drink, what is that like divided by two? So 75 ish, like ounces of water, 70, 75 ounces of water a day. Um, so something that you can do to like, kind of just make sure you're on top of it is get like, a like a, well, I always say drink out of glass or stainless steel, but you know, hydro flask is a wonderful company that makes great stainless steel water bottles. <laughs> I love mine. And they have it measured by like, they have like a 60 ounce one that I, uh, my husband brings with him to work every day and, um, you know, all different kinds. And so that's a great way to kind of track it. Cause then you can see, I, I personally use like a 24 ounce one. So I just make sure I get in enough of those every day, but that's a pretty much a general rule of thumb is half your body weight ounces of water. I like that. And so there's some really great hydro flasks that you can get um, all throughout the year at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, all those. So we got some Halloween ones of the jars. So like, oh yeah. And I have some little food containers that we brought oatmeal with on one of our trips. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, that's what amazing. And you can't go in October to get the Halloween stuff. It starts coming out the end of August, beginning of September. So all through September, all I do is look for Halloween stuff and I buy things then for my Christmas presents for people too. That's amazing. I it's love crazy. that. I, I love these guys too. They're orca. So you can kind of, I don't, you can kind of see that it looks like a whale tail. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And awesome. they, usually have some that are kind of fun and seasonal too. These, and I know it's kind of like a hip thing now, but um, we, we're like pint glasses used to be, we just have a whole bunch of these because we've ruined Great. enough computers that we're only allowed sippy cups. Both of us do computer work all the time. Like the, the last time I killed a computer, I was doing food photography and it was a tiny, tiny little glass of wine. I had set, sat on something. It just happened to hit the right place. So we always have sippy time. cups. Yes. Uh, the one time I actually ruined my MacBook was because I, it was, this was years ago when I was in school and I was like doing homework and I just had the smallest glass like of wine seriously. And I just accidentally tipped it over and there it ruined my computer. I was like, oh. I was like, so I learned that too the hard way. I was like, and this was a cordial <laughs> glass, like for real. Cause the way I was doing the perspective, it really was a teeny, teeny, tiny glass. <laughs> and I had to get a new computer immediately. And Brian has a good point about hydration that um, he's saying he probably eats more soup in the winter and you prob that liquid would count towards being more hydrated oh, yeah. as well. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, that's the beauty too of a plant-based diet is that, you know, plants are naturally have so much hydration to them and you're getting a lot of hydration with that too. So if you're not hitting your exact amount, like you're still getting it like through foods and things like that. So that's one of the benefits too of being plant-based is that, or at least trying to be more plant-based import, you know, implement more plants and fruits and veggies and stuff is that you'll, you'll get more hydration that way too. And it's, it does make things easier, I think, cause I, I've just been really loving soups. So some, some people know that we've been doing Mary's mini, which is just, which I'm always going to call next time we do it for our, us, the starch reset or something, because there's some older information about Mary's Mini. So everybody's like, but it says here you can't have this and it says here you can have it. So I was fielding a lot of, of that, but basically I just wanted everyone to kind of reset in a way that would feel best for them. Just to kind of go, okay, 10 days, like if, and the way I'd said, if you, are trying to stop eating meat, maybe don't eat meat for 10 days. If you're trying, if you've right. thought, if you've been starch solution curious, do the main starch solution because there's yeah. the maximum weight loss in Mary's Mini. And Mary's Mini is just meant to make things simple. So you pick one starch, yeah. you eat it for all your meals for 10 days, you add vegetables and sauces. But like mm -hmm. one of my favorite ones that I feel like, well, there were two. I made mashed potatoes and i just steamed up cheryl's favorite veggie mix is the kids mix you know with the corn and the carrots and the peas and so we, oh, yeah. we always have that so i had a plate of mashed potatoes that and then i made my golden gravy and poured all over it and it was Yum. delightful it was like eating kind of like eating a pot pie in my head it really a, a deconstructed shepherd's pie but it had all those yummy flavors 
And that felt so hydrating because I probably had two or three cups of veggies on there. That's amazing. Uh, I need to get your, um, I need to look for your golden gravy recipe then because that sounds uh, amazing. And I love, um, that's like seriously my favorite meal ever is like, I literally love making like a Buddha bowl and just like, it's got like rice, potatoes. Like I love, I've been on this like big kick of Yukon golds right now. Like I was, all, I had been on this big hype train of like Japanese sweet potatoes for a while, but then I was like, let me just try Yukon gold. And I was like, wow, I forgot how like naturally buttery and delicious and like satiating they are. I was like, wow, okay, I'm like really into these again. So yeah, I just make it with a couple different like starches. I just steam up some different veggies or, you know, and then I just make like a yummy homemade sauce. Like, like you said, you did your gravy. Like I would do that and like, or another recipe and then just put it over. And like, that is like, to me, like the best meal ever, because you're getting all the micronutrients you need. You're getting tons of fiber. You're getting great resistant starch. And like, um, some of the sauces that I make will have a little bit of fats in them too, just to get some of that for me. And, you know, it's just like, you just can get everything you need in like a simple Buddha bowl recipe, just like easy plants. <laughs> and I <laughs> like great. that. And like, so my golden gravy, you may, it's an oat mix. You make a mix, you make, you can make a double mix of it here. Let me see if I can show you. <laughs> so like, cause it always kills me. Cheryl's always like, let's buy brown gravy mix. And I'm like, no. <laughs> And I'm not, no, no. So this is just a big thing of my gravy mix. It's mostly oats, nutritional yeast, and some spices. I don't put any salt in it. And you can, so I don't toast the oats or anything for you. Just put all the stuff in a blender, blend it up. It's really easy. It's really cheap. And then you take about a quarter cup to a half cup, toast it over medium heat until it just smells nice. You don't even really have to do that, but it ups the flavor. You can either put yeah. water or non-dairy milk, whisk it, and if it gets too thick, add a little more liquid. If it never wow. thickens up enough, raise the heat a little bit. But it's it's really easy. Like, so like, let's oh say you God. made a gravy glob, you could still unglob it. That's amazing. Okay, I'm really excited. So I, yeah, like, again, like we talked about, like I'm all about the easiness, like easy peasy. <laughs> so right. that's like, it, you know what I mean? Like that sounds so simple and that's like my kind of like, recipe <laughs> the uh, and you can get this on healthyslowcooking.com if you look up gravy you'll find that for sure and another gravy I've been making a lot lately because I've been teaching some at the fabulous over 40s and they don't do any flowers is I've mm -hmm. made oat milk so I usually take one cup of rolled oats if it's summer I'll do three cups of water one cup of ice if it's winter, oh, yeah, it's yeah. cold enough, and you just can't let it get hot. So if you've got a high-speed blender, touch it. Don't let it get warm. Pulse, you know, and pulse wait. It. Pulse. And it's okay if you have big pieces of oats because you're going to strain them mm -hmm. out anyhow. Right. And then I take some of that, and I literally put it in a pan, a, like a saute pan, over medium to medium-high heat. You whisk it. The starch will start sinking to the bottom. It'll thicken it up. You're not using any flour. I mean, and then if you do it just like that, you can put salt or salt substitute and black pepper and make a southern black pepper gravy like you would for biscuits, right? Um, you could, of course, saute mushrooms and then do this process and make the same thing with a mushroom gravy. Uh, but it's just, I find that in the vegan community, oftentimes, and with grocery prices being what they are, which is crazy oh, that, I, you know, I know it seems like, oh, but I don't want to make these things, but like seriously, oat milk is the easiest, the absolute easiest. You just, you don't have to throw it in there, blend it up. So same thing with some of the mixes that I have. You just blend them up. I have a dry bullion mix, I think, on healthyslowcooking.com. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, and you know, and that's the thing too, like, it's such a good point you brought up is that, you know, unfortunately, most of the oat milks that are out there are terrible for you. So like, if you can just make one yourself, which is I've, I've made oat milk before, and it's like, so easy and simple. And, you know, you know, your ingredients, and you know, there are good oat milk brands out there, but the majority aren't organic and oats are a highly sprayed um, crop. So they have tons of pesticides and which have been linked to hormone disruption and gut disruption. And then a lot of them contain um, 
dipotassium phosphate, which is going to make a beeline for your kidneys. So it really disrupts your kidneys the same way like animal products do. Oh, creates wow. such a heavy. I didn't illness. know that because isn't that what yeah. makes it? Is that the one thing that makes it whiter? Or no? it, it's actually what allows it to steam really well. So like that's why a lot of like barista blend oat milk will have that phosphate in there because that's what it allows to do. And then the other thing too that oat milks usually will have are going to be like a really, really processed like oil. So I know a lot of people listening don't use oils at all. Um, but some of the oils that they're using in those oat milks are terrible. Like they're like the sunflower oil, like the ones that are really high in omega sixes, which are very inflammatory and trigger this pathway called arachidonic acid that really just like creates a lot of inflammation in the body. So it's a heavy hitter going for most oat milks out there, but just for the listeners, if anyone is buying oat milk, my favorite brands are going to be, um, I love Malk, M-A-L-K. They are wonderful. They're my favorite one. And then, um, the other one, I like this one company called Good Milk Co. And it's the, um, you have to order them online, but it's, um, the, uh, the milk is spelled with a Y. So it's Good M-Y-L-K Co. That's a really great brand. And then the other brand is, um, Three Trees. They're really great too. So those are like my tried and true good quality like oat milk brands if anyone's buying but um but making yourself is so easy <laughs> too so well and i just want to throw in too if you if you choose to make it because if you make oat milk once you'll make it again and i don't use a milk bag i just use a fine mesh strainer and it's super easy to clean okay. it's much easier to clean for me than a milk like i can show you that's great yeah i have a bunch of them but like this is one that's a double one so, oh. and sometimes I, if I know I'm doing a certain thing, I might strain through too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And it's not That's perfect. Uh, if you make your own at home, you can also put some ground chia seeds in there, like maybe like a teaspoon. If you do too much, it's going to turn, you know, into pudding. So that's not the worst thing that could happen in your life that you have now magical pudding that you, <laughs> you can put some vanilla in, but um, you can kind of play with it. And I usually grind my own chia seeds rather smaller than the ground chia seeds you can buy because you don't really want, we're not making boba. You don't want it to feel like yeah. boba milk. Um, <laughs> and so that will help it keep together a little bit because oat milk will separate. Then some nut milks like pecan milk, I'll, I'll strain it. I'll go to grab the thing and it's already separated into two things. So it has to be shaken right. up a lot. Oat milk will get slimy and it only lasts about three days. So you only want to make enough for three days. You could freeze it in ice cube trays. Ooh, that's a good idea. I love and, doing that with things that I make. <laughs> right. And it's, it's like, then you have bags of things. Then you're like, Ooh, look, I have aquafaba. How did I get that? <laughs> Oh, I guess I had an open ice cube tray. And then when you're talking about barista stuff, I would, I would like, and you please give me your opinion on these too. So the two things that I can froth really well, and I don't use like the hot frother. I use the little cheap stick. Oh, yeah. Ring. Yeah. Um, and this is from homemade milk. Obviously there's tons of barista blends that will, will froth, yeah. but there's some issues like Dr. Steph said. I make homemade soybean milk mm -hmm. and you can do that from soaked soybeans or not. I usually soak mine unless I forget and then sometimes I don't. But I put it in um, a milk maker so it heats it, right? So the thing about soy versus the others is before or after it's got to get heated. Yeah. And I get so organic soybeans. It's great. Yeah, definitely get the organic and um, for sure, because th those are one of the things that are also not only are they sprayed, but they're also GMO usually. So that's what, yeah, organic will uh, be good for you to, you know, check both those boxes. Um, But actually, that's funny that you said that. So because I, you know, when we ditched the, you know, crappy oat milk brands and all that kind of stuff years ago. Um, I was like, well, what can we use to like froth up? Cause we love to have our matcha or coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I found that soy milk is great at that. I really and just did. Just plain. And I was like, froth. Oh yes, no, it is it. the number one best frothing two ingredient, like, it and water yeah. at all. I was I was actually surprised because I had tried so many others. I was like, let's try almond milk and macadamia nut milk and all these things. And I was like, just so sad because I was like, nothing's frothing and I don't want to use the bad stuff. So, um, I use, yeah, the organic, um, 
Uh, I have a, I have actually never made my own soy milk, but I two brands that are great are gonna be West Soy. They have yeah. one that's just straight, like yeah, it's like plain. You get the plain one, and it's just like you said, water, organic soybeans. Um, oh, and the other one's totally leaving my brain right now, but Trader it's another Joe's. one in like a green. Trader Joe's is yeah. a good one. Yes, that's another one. And then there's one other one actually that I can't think of right now. They sell it at health food stores like Whole Foods, but um, it's in a green and white one to kind of like the Trader Eden Joe's. Soy. But anyways. Well, Eden soy. Okay. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Soy. Oh my gosh. I know my. my mom. Well, I'm kind of Yeah. Last year, I got to into non-dairy milks a lot, so I actually did a bunch of reviews on milk makers and things like that. So oh. if you guys are curious, you can go find those on YouTube. But there's there's nothing wrong with making it with your blender. I love the Mio Mat, which you can oh you can't see it. That's a picture. It's back there, but it's past the oh, okay. uh, pears. And it's just a bigger one, and it heats. So what I can, what I love about that, you can make soups, you can travel with it. I have a little one that heats too. So that's the, you know, an almond cow can do a lot of things in strain, and you could cook the soybeans and then make the milk or not, and then cook the milk after you make it. But soy milk is a little hard to clean up. The okara is gold though. So once you make this, and, and I, so I make, uh, I made a faux goat cheese with okara. We have a cream cheese with okara. Um, oh I God, make, I oh, to ricotta. This. So like, this is what I started. So like literally, so you've got soybean pulp, you just plop it in and like Kite Hill ricotta. I think that's the only vegan ricotta. It's like $10 for a little small container. Oh, okay. Yes, I take I that I've ricotta and I put, I, where I take the soy pulp and I put um, a little bit of lactic acid, some nutritional yeast, some garlic powder, salt or salt substitute, and it's perfect. Like literally, I just mix it up and then we make a lasagna with it. That's amazing. That's seriously amazing. And like, it speaks to me because like you're using what was left over, right? Like, so that's great. It's just a great way to like, you know, I, I, I completely, I don't think it's like, possible to be 100% non-wasteful but like that's a great way to just like reuse what you have and like make it into something delicious like that's incredible and you're still getting all of those nutrients and fiber that's still so good from the soybeans um right so and and I just I love it I love soy milk because it's super rich I can use less in it and things now I will say for anyone who's allergic to soy or for some medical reason can't have soy I have managed to make an almond milk that froths. Oh my gosh, what do you add to it that you that froths it? I I use so in the Mio mat, it's about a half a cup of thing to about five cups of water to get to the maximum line. So whenever you use a milk maker, you want to put the things you measure first and then go to that max or min line. <laughs> Else there could be trouble. So <laughs> not that I've ever experienced those troubles, but um, I found that using half a cup and I put it on the cereal mode, which means it cooks it. So you could still okay. do this, I think, on, on the stove, have your water, your soaked almonds or yeah. not soaked. If I do it on the cereal setting, I don't soak the almonds sometimes because they cook. Right, and that's right. the shortcut to not soaking. So you can literally right. put almonds in water and cook them for a while, then blend it and strain it. And I tried it, because I'm like, this isn't gonna froth. I just made some cashew milk using this, I used the raw setting, so I'll be interested. I need to try and try the cook setting, which didn't froth hardly at all, but the almond milk froths up and holds all, almost as good as the soy, but not quite. That's amazing. That's so good to hear. And then, um, but my, one thing that actually going off of what you said, um, the thing that I found that frost pretty decent, not as good as the soy, but does. And again, if you have someone who can't have soy, like they're allergic or whatever it is. Um, I actually found this, the brand new barn coconut milk to Ooh. be really great actually at frothing and to like steam up pretty well. And it's delicious tasting too, and great ingredients. Um, they have a great almond milk too. I haven't tried frothing that one, but um, that's one that I have used. If I just don't use soy, I'll use that. It's new barn and it's in like a blue um, little uh, bottle thing. And it's, it's great too. So that's another little, 
little fun one, but what's the name of the thing that you use again for, I need to write it down. I feel like I want to start making my own milk when I'm inspired. <laughs> oh, you and I need to have a conversation. So this is the bigger one. And I think for two people who are having it a lot, this, and I can come back and I have an affiliate link for this. It may even already be oh, in here, Mio Matt. Okay. And so like, you've got this and this comes off. This just helps it get really nice and um, mixed up well. It uses it like a funnel. Oh, and then cool. on the top, there's different setting buttons that you push and it has a cleaning setting too. Awesome. So, oh my God. So, and that, do you use that also to make your soy milk too? Oh yeah. Okay, so you use, use it for all that. Okay, cool. But, and, and if you don't want to make four to five cups at the same time, Arc Mira from Amazon, that's my favorite small one. And it makes about one and a half to two cups. So if you just wanted to make it fresh every day for your matcha. Right, and right. Yeah. The re and in there, sometimes what I'll do is I'll make a tea latte. So they have a setting that's like warm. And it, so it uses heat and it cooks for five minutes. So I'll make like a London Fog latte. I'll put my um, Earl Grey tea in there, some cashews and oats, and, and it kind of froths it all up. You could put a date in there and it gets it all going. And then I have, let's see, I have a couple of little just almost like tea, they're bar strainers. Aww. And yeah. I just strain it through right into my cup. And okay. there, there's tons of videos. I think I have a video where I make some creamers in that. I make like a lavender creamer, butter pecan creamer, or it could be turned into ice cream in the yeah. Ninja Creamy. But I reviewed quite a few. But for me, because I really like soy milk, having one with heat is very handy. Because if yes. you, and even in here, I have a little OXO brush that I scrub and it'll mm. come off, but Okara sticks to the metal a lot. Okay. So okay. the idea of having it here and then putting it into something else is more burdensome than if you were doing almond milk that way. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, and this is really cool. I've been seeing a lot of people now making their own milks and things like that, and I'm like, I think that's so great. And actually, I would really love to start making my own soy milk. I think that would be really fun. So I we I could will... do it together on a live if you want. Oh, that would be really fun. So when I get mine, then I will let you know, and then that could be like our one of our live shows we do together. Oh, you that would be really fun. And then other people will learn for sure because they'll be inspired too. <laughs> well, and we'll have about twenty minutes to talk while it goes too. <laughs> Oh, I think that's so perfect. So we could even talk about something else too. It'll be like a two for one. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Well, I know that you need to go and get your day started. We're running a little bit over what time you asked to start, stop at. But as always, it was so much fun. And we'll see when we can meet up next month and maybe yes. even make some soy milk together. That would be really fun. That would be great. Thank you for having me, Kathy, and for everyone for coming on and listening today. It was such a fun chat with you. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, you guys have an amazing day, and I will be talking to you very, very soon.